Hey, everybody. Hey. It's, a, it's a real pleasure to uh, be here with you today, and I'm so happy to be here with my friend, Miguel. Yeah, thanks for having us. I'm really happy to be here and excited to jump into this conversation. Yeah, so so uh, so Miguel and I are both uh, have really strong Austin roots. We both went to UT Austin, and um, we we really feel like Austin has been infused in us and is a huge part of our success. And so we want to kind of explain that, and also just tell you how bullish we are on both the tech and the CPG scene. Um, one of the things that Miguel and I talked about before this is. The fact that in Austin, there's this ethos of people really helping each other. And one of the stories I told Miguel, I don't think I don't think Miguel actually knew this story. Um, it was from about 13 years ago. I was speaking on a panel with um, Amy of Amy's Ice Cream. And she said, you know, when I lived in Boston, I was working for an ice cream store. And I went around to six different cities in the US to determine where I was going to locate my own ice cream store and kind of start, you know, being an entrepreneur myself. And she visited these six cities and, you know, really studied the demographics and found that they all would do well from a demographic standpoint. But ultimately, she decided on Austin because Austin was the only place that she visited where small business owners literally would open the books for her. They would say, here's how much we pay our employees. Here, here's how much our raw materials cost. Here's who we order for. Here's all the things you need to know about our business. Here's all the people that we know in Austin that can really help you get started. And she was just absolutely blown away by that. She couldn't believe how Austin welcomed her in such with such open arms. And that was how she made her decision. And I know a lot of tech entrepreneurs, a lot of tech investors that are moving here right now and that's one of the number one things that I'm hearing from them, them is that ethos of us really helping each other is alive and well here. What do, what do you think about that, Miguel? Yeah, I actually, as you were telling that story, um, I found it to be pretty similar in the food space. And, and interestingly, how the food space overlaps or the CPG space overlaps with, with tech. So um, as we were starting our company, I was able to connect with the founders of Epic Provisions, who now started another company called Force of Nature. So uh, Katie and, and Taylor uh, were pretty instrumental early on for us as we were navigating how to start a food business at all. Um, and then interestingly, for the kind of the, the broader, the broader Texas ethos, um, there's three food companies currently in Austin with founders from Laredo, Texas, which is just three and a half hours south of Austin. So Natamu, um, uh, Credo Foods, which you're familiar with, and then yeah. Siete, all founded by people from Laredo. And even as we were starting um, Siete, the founder of Credo was um, a founder of Perk.com. And I was going to him asking him about running business too. So I just feel there's this atmosphere in Austin where people want each other to succeed. And you see that um, in all of the different resources that people share with each other to, to make that happen. Yeah, I, lo I love that about Austin. And, you know, I've been noticing that literally since I was a kid, um, as you and I were talking, talking about, I grew up programming since I was seven years old. And I feel like I just absolutely won the lottery by being born here because when I was 10 in 1982, I'm 48 years old, my mom would take me to programming user groups and drop me off to work with these programmers and learn from them. And I just thought, you know, that's normal. <laughs> but, mm. you know, in 1982, that existed in almost no place in the entire United States. And the reason that happened here and the reason we have such a thriving tech e ecosystem is it all builds on top of each other. You know, UT got very lucky in having land that turned out to literally have gold on it. I mean, you know, or, or oil, you know, that the liquid gold. Yeah. And that turned into so much money that today, and through great management too, today UT has, I think the third largest, maybe second largest endowment in the country now it's kind of astonishing to think of. I mean, I think Harvard is number one and I think Yale is number two or three, but UT is, is, is right up there with them. 
And that birthed the tech industry here because it got UT to buy the original Cray supercomputers back when almost no one owned those in the entire United States. That attracted the researchers here that wanted to work on them. And that in turn, uh, because they were in a really cool place, physically beautiful in Texas, that in turn got them to stay here and eventually start companies. And, you know, when I was born, I didn't know any of that history, obviously, um, but I was a big beneficiary of that and, and just feel so fortunate that that was the case. And, and now, you know, Miguel, as you know, we have such a thriving CPG ecosystem and that's, you know, in large part to companies like yours. You know, I was the initial seed investor in Credo, but gosh, I wish I was the initial seed investor in Siete too. I just, I, I wasn't doing, you know, investing in CPG back then, but, you know, I don't know if you want to, if, if I can make I, you watch here, what's your last document, <laughs> but it's pretty, pretty incredible how, how, how great you guys have done. Yeah, uh, thank you for that. And I, I think you actually bring up an important point, which I think the city does a good job of fostering um, because you, you brought up resources. And I think Austin has a thriving, um, uh, a thriving culture of entrepreneurship because we have the human capital resources, which I think were developed by um, the Dells of the world, the John Mackeys of the world, um, and even yourself in the, in the companies that you founded, right? Because you, you attract talent, you attract them to your mission, and then those individuals begin to seed other companies. And then I think you see it in the, uh, the actual cash that's infused into companies. So you have human capital and then you just have straight cash that people like yourself are reinvesting into the, into the ecosystem. And then I think you have, at least in the food space, you have opportunity. So opportunity is super important seeing other individuals, it's something that I'm personally passionate about because um, when we were getting started, we, we couldn't find uh, in Austin a lot of Latino CPG founders. And so we want to be successful so that we can demonstrate that people of diverse backgrounds can start food businesses and be successful. So when you have opportunity, and in this case, in the food space, you have Whole Foods sitting in downtown Austin, yep, exactly. and you have and you have a pretty awesome grocer in HEB sitting in San Antonio. Amazing. And so when, when you have those things, and then you have the Wheatsville food co-ops of the world, those are the opportunities that the food and beverage community needs in order to have a platform to scale up on top of. So. I think when you have those three things, which I'm very happy that we do, you just start to see a robust um, flywheel effect take place. Yeah, yeah, so well said. And, you know, I feel so lucky to be able to really pay back, um, is the way I look at it, so many people that have helped me get to where I am. I mean, I'm a product of many, many people that have invested in me, starting with my my mom and then my wife, um, you know, I've been married 24 years now and she actually helped me start my original companies and um, really has just constantly supported me through through good times and bad. And now I'm an investor in uh, 93 startups and 29 VC funds and very proud investor in, in the Capital Factory um, partners funds as well. Um, and, you know, obviously Capital Factory has just done such a good job of helping create the ecosystem here, really fostering all types of connectivity. And I love the Texas Startup Manifesto now where we're connecting Dallas and Houston, um, you know, in San Antonio to Austin, because part of the challenge in Austin, at least, as you know, is that we don't really have generational wealth here. You know, when I grew up here, I, I was born in 1972. This was a really small place, you know, kind of, you know, like, like like Laredo was back then. I mean, there wasn't a ton going on in Austin. There certainly wasn't a lot of money at all. I don't remember seeing any of it growing up. Um, but uh, but now there's a lot of new money, a lot of entrepreneurs that have really done a great job and gotten very lucky. And there's a lot of money moving here from both coasts um, for lots of reasons. You know, lower taxes. You know, more liberty. 
um, you know, better run government. There's 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 a lot of a lot of reasons that they're moving here. Actually, yesterday, Joe Lonsdale, who's the founder of 8BC and the co-founder of Palantir, which just went public, just wrote a Wall Street Journal op-ed on why he just moved to Austin um, out of California. Um, but yeah, that ethos is alive and well. And I think, you know, one thing I'd love the audience to know here, and I, I know you would agree with this, Miguel, is that as great as the last 10 to 15 years have been for entrepreneurship, and both of us have really benefited from that, I think the next 10 to 15 years are going to be even better. I mean, I, I don't see any sign of the momentum slowing down. If anything, it just is gathering more and more steam, building more and more on itself. And, and I think it's just going to be an absolutely amazing time to be an entrepreneur in Austin. And, and probably, you know, that extends to Dallas, Houston and San Antonio as well. Yeah. And, and what's actually interesting when you talked about um, wealth in Austin and Mayor Adler touched on this earlier, um, when he said that Austin has a culture of risk taking and that that's how he perceives the uh, keep Austin weird slogan. Um, and I actually think when you look at all of the amazingness that Austin has as a city in its cultivation of entrepreneurship, um, it's that we have this culture of creativity and a culture of curiosity. And I think I, I wouldn't disagree with your statement that the next 10 to 15 years um, are going to be really great for the community. Uh, but I will say that it doesn't just happen on its own and it takes a reinvestment in community. And so that means taking care of um, taking care of the people that live here, um, taking care of the teams that you may employ and continuing to build on the culture and not turn it into um, something that it's not. So I think that we have to continue to to we have to continue to invest in what makes this culture and this city special and then we also have to get better um right. and i think we have to create more opportunity and i think we need um we need to create more opportunity for diverse founders and we need I to heard, be yep. we need to be willing to um take off the blinders of pattern recognition that sometimes lead us down paths of of being not inclusive. So mm -hmm. I I think if we can if we can recognize what makes what makes this so great, we we can also recognize where we want to go and then get there together. So at at Siete, what we would call that, and and I'm I'm flattered that that you would say that you would uh, have wanted to invest at at the seed stage, be, because. I think that we're a company of uh, values and, and our first core values, family first, family second, business third, which I know you'd agree with. Um, our last core value is to do everything with love. But the thing that we talk about the most is something that we call juntos es mejor. And that means together is better. And so I think that if, if we want, there's, there's a charge that we all have. And, and that charge is um, to build on everything that you talked about and then to make it make it better for the people that live here and the, the people that want to call this place home. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't agree with that more. And, and, you know, just a couple of proof points on that um, about how it builds on itself. And you'll, you'll, you'll be no doubt able to share this with Siete given how well uh, the business has performed and, just has an amazing amount of momentum. I've already bragged on how much our family is completely addicted to your product. <laughs> um, I didn't quite realize that my wife literally consumed a bag a day until <laughs> yesterday. But uh, but anyways, we're we're mega fans here, and and you know that goes across my my son and, and daughter and me too. Um, but uh, you know, with with uh, Bizarre Voice, which was my company prior to Data Dot World, I really think Data Dot World is is going to be the biggest company that that i founded um to date and it's just an amazing team but uh bizarre voice was a great outcome you know we had a billion dollar ipo and it was named one of the top five ipos by the wall street journal in 2012 and the most 
amazing thing, and I remember being interviewed about this by um, the Austin American Statesman um, right after we went public, or maybe it was right before, it was like right in that zone, it's like a week before, a week after, where they said, well, you know, what are you gonna do when, when so many people leave because they've now become wealthy and I'm like, I'm gonna stand up and applaud them. Are you kidding? Like, like I, I think they're gonna go start companies and that's what capital is all about. Like capital is all about the ripple effects. And now there have been almost 50 companies started by former Bizarre Voice people. And we went yeah. public in 2012. And there, that, there's nothing like that feeling. And one of the greatest compliments they give me is you know, we were rated the number one company to work for in Austin when we're small, then medium, then large. Data.World actually just got named in the top three companies to work for too, which is awesome. Um, but they, they really tell me, you know, that they brought a lot of the best parts of the culture with them. We certainly weren't perfect. Um, but one thing that I've done just to touch on diversity um, that you touched on with Data.World is we're a proud B corporation. And we actually get publicly measured as a certified B Corporation. By the way, Capital Factory is also a B Corporation. But we get publicly measured on how diverse we actually are. And um, we are over 50% now um, either women or people of color at the company. And we're a tech company. Okay, We like bust all the benchmarks on that. But it's been very deliberate. Um, and it's... Uh, it's, it's meant like looking outside the most immediate population. I always explain this to founders that like, you know, I'm Jewish and I'm, you know, I guess white, right? White was a made up concept, but, but let's run with it. And um, as a result, like I get invited to a lot of Jewish events that you don't get invited to. You get invited to a lot of Hispanic events that I don't get invited to. And that's not like people are intentionally excluding us or whatever, it's just, they say, Miguel, you know, he's the CEO of Siete. You know, of course we should have him here. And they say, Brett, you know, he's Jewish and we should have him at this Jewish event. Um, and you have to be very deliberate at working outside of your immediate population or you're not gonna create a diverse company. Um, and part of what I look at my mission with data.world is we make this company very successful. Now we're gonna have a lot of diverse founders coming out of data.world like which could be more successful than Bizarre Boy. So I, I love your comments on that. Yeah, and I think that's, it's uh, to hear that there were 50 companies founded and that they're taking the best of the culture um, is actually the mission that we have at Siete in trying to build. So we're, we're building a healthy Mexican American food brand for this generation, but most more importantly is we're building a company that puts people first. So the family first, family second, business third is us taking care of the people that have decided to call Siete their workplace home. Mm -hmm. And and I think the reason that that's important is because we want to make sure that we're successful and that we take care of our people because our fundamental belief is that if we can demonstrate success in how we take care of people, that it'll give a new pattern to recognize or a new playbook for uh, startups to use um, that shows that taking care of people and creating diverse companies is the way that you can succeed in business. So. Mm -hmm. I think for us, it's super important and it's, uh, it's great to hear, to hear your story. And, um, yeah, I, I appreciated getting to be here and, and share kind of some of our perspective with Austin and entrepreneurship and, um, starting a business here. Well, like, likewise, and, and to, uh, to all of you watching this, um, a toast to a lot more tech success in Austin, we hope that you're very successful entrepreneurs and a toast to a lot more CPG success. One of the things we didn't talk about that's really important is the two actually feed on each other. We are learning from each other. Um, you know, CPG is bringing in the best of tech and um, it's, it's a really, really exciting time for Austin. I think the future is incredibly bright. I can't wait to see what the next 10 to 15 years bring. Definitely. Thanks, everybody. Awesome.